This mask is Ramin's new mask, especially for the 25th anniversary, which we've altered slightly from his existing mask, because it's always kind of good to play with details, really. And also the makeup's changed a little bit, and the mask has to fit exactly over the makeup. From a performance point of view, it has to do that, but also from a technical sound point of view, from his microphones and things, it has to sort of look good. And it also very much has to enhance Ramin's face in that it, the idea is that the Phantom has tried to make himself look extraordinarily attractive and masculine and handsome. And so the, the, his way of doing it is the mask. And the original concept of this, which came from Marie Bjornsson, was that because of the period, he'd actually made this in fine porcelain. Although technically, of course, we don't use porcelain. That's the overall image of the thing, that he's made this mask particularly to make himself to hide this gruesome sort of... Uh, distortion in the rest of his face. We also spend a lot of time making sure that the, the shape of the mask works really well as a sculptural item in itself because at the point where Christine pulls the mask off it becomes an object in itself. It's no longer a mask, it's also uh, a sculptural object. Today is our first rehearsal. We open in less than two weeks. We open on Saturday. So we're doing this 25th anniversary concert at Royal Albert Hall. I play uh, Christine Daae, really excited. Well, she's definitely a dream role for a lot of girls, and she was definitely a dream role for me. And um, I was very lucky that I got to do the show. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I've played the role in town for two years, but obviously because it's for, to get it right for the DVD, it's never been this intricate. And so much time spent on it, and the amount of makeup. As you can see, it's starting to crack. But it's a cool process. It helps with everything, you know, to get, get your head around it. Great, you know, to have Chris Tucker do it too, the original guy. I'm really looking forward to watching him do it. It's so detailed. And, and to do this occasion, I just am so grateful for and really excited to do, put my take on it. So to start the rehearsals, go through this process with Chris Tucker on my birthday, it's a, it's a good one. Hi, I'm Cameron McIntosh and I'm in the wonderful um, Ealing Studios, those amazing historic film studios where we are putting um, Phantom of the Opera together for our 25th anniversary. It couldn't be a more perfect place um, and quite amazing to see so many people from the show's history and new people who have been in the production to make this one-off event with over 130 people in the cast and a glorious orchestra that you can hear next door. Um, and only three days to go, so I'm, I'm excited, but nervously excited. Well, today is the last run that we have in the room. We, for the last 10 days, we've been staging, putting the whole production together, getting people from different companies in at different times. And today, yesterday was the first time we actually sort of put all the scenes together just to sort of see how they one led into another. Today was the first time we ran it from start to finish, just to sort of see where the holes are. After this, we go into a um, Zitz probe rehearsal, so we hear it with the orchestra. So we start to, at this stage now, we start to combine all the elements that will build it to the extravaganza that we hope it will be. <laughs> Behold, she is singing to bring down the chandelier. 
what, what all this is about is about seeing the auction before you hoik it up. I was part of the original crew who put it into Her Majesty's Theatre. I was one of the production electricians working with Andy Bridge, the lighting designer, and uh, building things for the show then as they wanted them. Well, they wanted a chandelier, obviously. You need one for Phantom of the Opera, and quite a big one for the Albert Hall. And we talked about it a while ago, but only recently they decided they really needed us to build one, so we did. Um, there were a few snags given the time, trying to get everything, all the 40,000 beads, um, globes, steel, laser cutting and things, and getting it into the buildings. It, it, it was built to break into pieces to fit in a 40-foot trailer. Um, but on Friday night, we had to dismantle the front of the stage to get access to the main elevators in the Albert Hall to get all the sections together. And then we were able to lift it up piece by piece and bolt it all together, ready for Saturday morning's technical rehearsal before the show on Saturday night. About midnight before we got in, and at 5 o'clock, we'd done a pyro test and we're having a cup of tea. I don't think the Royal Albert Hall has ever seen anything like this. I mean, 15 years ago, I did do the 10th anniversary of Les Miserables there, but it was a little small production in comparison to this. I mean, when Andrew and I decided that the best way to celebrate the 25th anniversary was to put on the show rather than do a concert, and we both thought that the Albert Hall would be the perfect venue, um, it was one of those marvellous ideas which seemed so right, and of course we wanted the greatest cast in the world, and uh, we've got that, uh, we wanted a marvellous orchestra, but the reality of what my creative team have managed to pull together to turn this beautiful Victoria Concert Hall into a proper theatrical space because we are doing the whole complete show uh, and of course our version will be different in some ways but is absolutely inspired by the brilliant original of Hal Prince and uh, Gillian Lynn which is still currently running to packed houses at Her Majesty's Theatre. But alas, of course, our amazing original designer, Maria Wilson, sadly died several years ago. Though Matt Kingley, our new designer, who's picked up the baton and lovingly taken what Maria created and come up with this extraordinary uh, and unbelievably spectacular rendition of the original show, which I think is going to be two terrific nights and uh, something that I will always treasure. I've been involved with Fans of the Opera for 25 years. Um, Maria Bjornsson and myself designed all the, the uh, lighting and effects, and uh, we've been improving it for 25 years, and it's still running, thank goodness. Over the years, we, we, we have tried to keep it the same, actually, because the language of, of doing um, Phantom in the Paris Opera of the 1800s is all gas, uh, footlights, mystery, darkness, uh, and actually it's not a modern, modern image anyway, so we, we aren't in a modern world, and so some of the, the languages of the, of the lighting, uh, the darkness is our friend, and we use the darkness, whereas modern shows it's a bit more brighter and a bit more brash, but actually we keep the, the, the show very fresh by keeping it old looking. They found a good formula in 1986 and they've stuck to it, which is good news. Money good. Yeah. It differs because it's a very different space, so the space is challenging. Um, it, it isn't a theatre as such, it's a hall, and therefore you have to create your own theatre within, within the space that you're playing in. Um, and of course, therefore, there's no hanging.